In the last section, we introduced parametric models and looked at how to implement linear and logistic regression. In this section, we're going to cover the non-parametric model family. We'll start by covering the bias-variance trade-off and explaining how parametric and non-parametric models differ at a fundamental level, and then we'll get into decision trees and clustering methods. Finally, we'll address some of the pros and cons of the non-parametric models. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of error due to bias and introduce a new source of error, variance. We'll begin by clarifying what we mean by error terms, and then we're going to dissect various sources of modeling error, bias, and variance. One of the central topics of model building is reducing error, error referring to prediction error, or how off our decision function's generalizations are. However, there are several types of error, two of which we have control over to some extent. These are called bias and variance. There's a trade-off in the ability for a model to minimize either bias or variance, and this is called the bias-variance trade-off or the bias-variance dilemma. Some models do well at controlling for both to an extent, but this is a dilemma that's always going to be present in your modeling considerations for the large part. We introduced bias at the end of section 2 is model error as a result of oversimplifying the relationship between x and y. High bias can also be called underfitting or overgeneralization. High bias generally leads to an inflexible model that misses the true relationship between features and the target function that we're modeling. In the image shown, the relationship between x and y, the true relationship, is oversimplified and the true function of f of x, which is basically a logit function, is missed. Parametric models tend to suffer high bias problems a bit more, and examples include linear logistic regression, as we've hinted at in the last section. In contrast to the high bias you're now familiar with, error due to variance can be thought of as the variability of a model's prediction for a given sample. So imagine you repeat the modeling process many times, the variance is how much your predictions for a given sample will vary across different inductions of the model. High variance models are commonly referred to as overfit and suffer the exact inverse of high bias. So that is, they do not generalize enough. High variance usually comes from a model's insensitivity to signal as a result of its hypersensitivity to noise. Generally, as model complexity increases, variance becomes our primary concern. Notice in the image shown that a polynomial term has led to a very overfit model where a simple logit function would have sufficed better. Unlike high bias problems, high variance problems can be addressed with more training data, which can help the model learn to generalize a bit better. So examples of high variance models, which we haven't yet covered, uh, are decision trees and k-nearest neighbors, and both of those are ones that we're going to cover in this section. Here we're going to examine a handy way to diagnose higher bias or variance. They're called learning curves. In this example Python snippet, we're leveraging the function in the PactML utils submodule called plot learning curve. This function is going to take an estimator and fit it on various sizes of training data defined in the train sizes parameter. What's displayed is the model performance on the train and corresponding validation set for each incremental model fit. So this example uses our linear regression class that we talked about in the last section to model the Boston housing data, which is a regression problem, and it displays symptoms of high bias. So notice that our error is very similar for the train and validation sets. It got there very rapidly, but it's still relatively high. So additionally, the scores converge so quickly, right, and they don't improve as our training set grows at all, and those are all symptoms of high bias. Alternatively, if we model the same data with a decision tree regressor, which we're actually going to build in this section, we notice symptoms of high variance or overfitting. Notice there's a huge discrepancy between the training score and the validation score, and even though it gets better with more data, it never quite reaches convergence. So as I mentioned before, high variance can be treated with more data, which is continually getting better. If you determine that you're suffering from a high bias problem, you can try making your model more complex by engineering more informative signal-rich features. So for example here, one thing you could try doing is creating new features that are uh, polynomial combinations of your x1. Right? So you could create a logit function of x1 and that would model our function perfectly. You can also try tuning some of the hyperparameters. For instance, k-nearest neighbors, even though it's a high variance model, can become high bias very quickly is you increase the k hyperparameter and vice versa. We'll see more of this later in this section. If you instead find yourself facing a high variance problem, we've already seen how more training data can help to an extent. You can also perform some feature selection to pare down the model complexity. The most robust solution lies in bagging or ensembling, which combines the outputs of many models, which all in turn vote on each sample's label or output regression score. In this video, we covered some theory around the bias-variance trade-off, 
and the definitions of overfitting and underfitting. You should now have a better understanding of how variance and bias are impacted by model choice and some methods for addressing them.